Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss V. Today I'm very excited to be here because we are about to try something different that I've never done before in this channel. Today's practice will focus in fact on a new media that I would like to introduce which is watercolor pencil. Actually this idea came from one of you, uh, one of my followers for whom I'm very very grateful. So keep sending feedback and keep sharing your like experience or something that you would like to explore and I will be happy to uh, do my best to accommodate your uh, requests. So I happen to have a watercolor set that I brought from school. It's very scholastic brand and nothing fancy and as I always encourage you mostly if you are a beginner or you're moving your first step into an artistic practice and you want to build it little by little think about that at the beginning the technique and the foundational steps and foundational knowledge are much more important than the quality of the supplies so of course don't go for the cheapest cheapest one but do for an average a good quality but still a scholastic brand that would be more than enough once you master the technique and you become very familiar and very confident then i suggest you and i advise you to invest a little extra money to buy more professional supplies because at that point since you already know the technique and you kind of master it or at least you are pretty confident you will have the best result also remember that sometimes we just want to use what we have available and it is perfectly okay because the process is more important than the final product so mostly when we are also using art to kind of help ourselves uh, to set a nice and relaxed pace in our life, uh, cut some time for us, uh, train our fine model skills in a very creative way and explore and step out of our comfort zone. For today's practice, you will need your watercolor journal or watercolor paper. If you don't have it, you can try on mixed media paper, but the mixed media is usually pretty smooth, so why the watercolor paper has some nice texture that is what we are looking for if you don't have watercolor pencil but you still want to do the practice with me and you have a regular colored pencil please do the practice the only thing that you the only thing that you will skip is the final step when we brush the water on top of this pencil and we see what happens right but you can do the design with a pencil you can use the what the coloring pencil and you're going to focus as I will guide you through coloring technique, shading and value, which is the light and the darkness in a piece, which is a very important element because it makes all of our pieces more interesting and it gives movement, right, and depth. So it's something that we really want to cultivate in a with a variety of media. Today, watercolor pencil. So as I was saying, you will need your paper watercolor paper or your journal, watercolor pencil, or if you don't have them for today, just regular pe coloring pencil, a pencil for drawing, an eraser, and keep a sharpener nearby because you know that when we color with pencils, sometimes we need to sharp them, sharp them uh, uh, along the way, sorry. Um, and what else? Oh, a cup with the water, of course, and a small brush so we can do the final step and we can see what happens. So I'm going to switch the camera so we can do the practice together and see what happens. Okay, this is my journal. As you notice, I'm not working on a big, huge area. Remember, the coloring takes time, so you don't want to commit on a very big piece, at least not at the beginning. So I suggest you that if your journal is bigger, you can divide the page so you have a smaller space, so you kind of frame your space. Today, I'm going to try something still inspired by nature, but something that I did not share with you so far, my love for mushroom. So you can follow my lead, you can change something in your design, and we're gonna start with a drawing pencil. I'm gonna start to set some nice mushroom here and there. I love mushrooms because they are so nice and cute. I know that sometimes when I started the sketching, since I don't press hard with the pencil, it is really a little hard for you to uh, follow the line so try your best and if you need to pause the video and rewatch it uh, uh, do so let me see if by lowering the light a little bit it's gonna be a little better so two kind of curved and parallel line and then look what I do I don't start from the top of the line I start over here and I kind of trace sort of a very long elongated oval and then we're gonna build the top of the mushroom on top. 
then uh, maybe we're gonna do another one on the other side just not on the same line so we can create a nice movement to our piece And we want to occupy our space nicely so then we can add some leaves i'm thinking of adding details that will allow us some variation in the color palette of course i'm not gonna think of realistic mushroom you know me by now you should know that i love to do like uh, my own things then let's see a few more different type of mushrooms very thin stems this time because we're gonna do multiple so first i'm gonna set my stems and then i'm gonna set to the top i'm doing the oval first you can do you you can add and change details. You can diversify your mushrooms. If you want to go realistic, you go realistic. You do you. Remember that we are just setting a nice design. We're going to get some zigzag, line, zigzag lines too. Oh my, today I feel that my English. Uh, I'm on vacation after all from school. So this is what happened when I speak Italian all the time at home. <laughs> so we are just setting a design that will allow us to color and have fun. Maybe we can add some sort of plants. Why not? Some nice leaves. Maybe that goes also behind. You know, remember that when we overlap object, we create that... Uh, interesting sense of depth right and little illusion of space because we have something on the uh, front and then something behind the more grass and i would like to do one fat mushroom over here and maybe here i will go behind all the way and i can add another type of which i'm kind of kind of trying to remember by memory different shapes of mushrooms i'm not really concerned if i'm doing it realistic mushroom or not i will actually use a very colorful color palette and i invite you to do the same because we're gonna have fun right so i'm gonna set some circles i create a pattern in this one and in this one similar because they belong to the same family on this one i think that i will do some shading and maybe this one will have a smaller circle so we don't do all the same pattern around and now let's have fun and let's color remember that this is the color, the watercolor pencil that I have available. So you see that I have many, many colors. You might have less options. Use what you have, be creative. Remember that you can always mix the colors and see what happens. So don't feel that you are uh, limiting yourself because you have a limited color palette. And let's have fun and remember that, for example, when we use the green, we want to always use a couple of like a dark and light and so with other colors. So we create a more interest in our uh, picture. Remember also that if you are using watercolor pencil at the end, we are going to add the, the element of water. So you want to make sure that you have something to blend, right? If we have only one color, what well, we are going to, you know, it's not going to be fun. We start to set some coloring for the grass and the ground definitely a little darker when we have like when we meet the little line of the horizon that i traced and then i'm going over with some lighter brighter green so hopefully when we're gonna mix these two with the water we're gonna have a nice interesting 
shade a little bit like the result should be very similar to my other watercolor practice. Why do I like a watercolor pencil? Let me tell you, I use them a lot actually in school with my students. First, because I, uh, unfortunately, I don't teach all of my classes in my own room, but I have to move around the school with a cart to teach the lower grades in elementary. And being on cart and visiting their classroom is a big challenge for me because those classroom have carpet, they don't have a sink, and I'm on a cart, you know, and I'm a tiny person. I cannot really push around a huge cart. And let me tell you, yes, teacher's life, it's really hard. I feel that we are learning the profession and we also learn... Uh, survival skills but anyway so i opted for watercolor pencil because i can give the opportunity to teach kids a very nice coloring technique to shade and blend and mix the color together and fill the gaps right don't just scribble scrabble everywhere so for them is an extremely good exercises and training for their fine model skills and the coloring technique and also they can have that experience of painting, but it's much less, you know, there is much less mess compared to cups and brushes and gallons of water that I could, that I should bring in case we paint for real. Now, what I, with my middle school in my classroom, we do both. We do watercolor pencil, mostly for some students that they might have some challenge and they need a little extra practice for developing their, you know, their skills and they don't feel safe enough to jump immediately into watercolors because they feel intimidated by the brush and definitely the pencil is something that it's more familiar to all of us and so we can control it better. So in case you want to explore the watercolor pencil and you still don't have them and you're doing this practice with maybe reg with regular pencil, maybe you really want to invest a little money and buy them because if you prefer pencil because you can control better the result and you feel kind of more rewarded when you do art, go for it and buy them because then you can brush the water on top and it's gonna be really, really, really nice. And you can have a painting uh, that is, well, it's, it's not a painting, which uh, you know what I mean, it's still a painting, but a painting that is done with pencil. And you might feel better because you can control it. So as you can see, I'm playing with dark green, medium green. I create a nice shade, so it's not gonna be all boring and all the same. Have fun if you are a beginner, a child during this video, if you are teaching it to your children, encourage them to be creative. We don't have to do like all um, boring color. If they wanna have a lot of hot pink uh, or purple or yellow, let them go for it. You think of that. Probably I'm gonna, oopsie, I lost my sharpener because I just tossed it from the table. Now I better don't need a sharpener then. I'm putting some gray. At the end, we can also do exactly like we do with traditional watercolor, some nice outline with an extra fine black permanent markers if you wish to do so or we can leave them the way they are. I'm creating a powder with some color on top of the gray because I'm very curious to see what happens once we brush gently and carefully the water on top. I'm gonna start with this red over here, avoiding the dots that I will leave probably white. And since this one is our first exploration of watercolor pencil, I'm mostly focused on what will happen at the end and in mixing colors together 
and different tint and different tones of the same color, just two different colors in the color palette, just because I wanna see and I'm curious to see what happened. And I think that I'm not really focusing on the direction of the light. I will do some value and I will add the darker and lighter spot, but I'm not really concerning rendering the light effect realistically. Just I wanna focus more on the Let's see if I can use this red to dark up. You see, I'm going over. I'm not going to go over everything, but I will go over part of that mushroom top. So when we blend them together, we see what happens. For the underneath, I think I'm going to dark it up near the stem of the mushroom and then release a little bit the pressure of the pencil so the color will show lighter. Remember, you add the more pressure and then you release the pressure from the paper. I will do the same over here, making it darker, adding more pressure on my hand, and then releasing the pressure a little bit, adding more. And releasing. Now, let's see what can we do for this. I need to be kind of creative. I want a nice, inviting palette. So I'm going to do once again, darker, so a little more pressure and a little less. And again, darker. If you want to outline the area, you can do so. Dark and more pressure, and little by little, we release the pressure. I will do it. This is a little family of purple mushroom. I do love mushroom, by the way. They remind me of my childhood when I was in Italy, one of my father's sister. So my aunt was extremely knowledgeable about mushroom. I don't know here in the States, but in Italy, in order to be able to legally collect, you know, mushrooms from the wild, you need to have a certificate and pass a test. So she went to school because she was very passionate and she passed it. And so she had this certificate and she would bring us as a kid with us so we would collect a mushroom and then she would explain which one were the good ones that we could keep and cook with it which were the poisonous one and etc of course as you can imagine as a kid i would collect all the previous one that usually are uh, the most dangerous so uh, my basket was full of a beautiful but absolutely useless mushroom but anyway it was so fun so I'm not really concerned, as you can see, to represent realistic mushroom. Mushroom for me are amazing creatures. They, are, they have been on this planet since forever and they come in so many different colors and shapes. So when I paint my mushroom, sometimes I would do greeting card set uh, or design of my Christmas tree ornament. I always do this whimsical, magical mushrooms, even if they do not exist in reality but who cares right we make our own reality when we practice art we can do whatever we feel like on our paper and just you know like many other practice that i propose to you always make sure that you have your personality and your personal connection we are here to try in a technique you can try the technique and you can learn about a media a technique by doing a variety of design you don't have to follow and copy exactly what i do in front of your eyes you can stretch and twist the practice as you would like to so always remember that
and have fun, of course. We're gonna do these stems, a little more colorful. I'm doing a little more pressure on one side and then release. A little more pressure and then release. A little more pressure and then release. If you leave, if you leave some white gaps, uh, it's not a really you know like a, a good like a great deal because we are going with a um, water on top at the end. I'm gonna do the bottom of this one exactly as I did it here. A little more pressure, so darker, and then I release the pressure and I make it look lighter. If you're using regular pencil, you're coloring these exactly as I'm doing. I'm doing mine. And if you decide to invest then in watercolor pencil and redo the practice with watercolor pencil, you will notice that uh, these pencil are softer. So the graphite inside is softer compared the, to the regular coloring pencil. This is one of the differences, which is Hmm, let me see. Let me play with this beautiful turquoise just because it's my favorite color, this nice aqua color. So why not? I'm going to put in more, a little more pressure and release. So we're going to make sure that everything that we color is not just plain, not because you cannot color something plain, but maybe in these techniques, as we say, we want to see some movement happen, happening when we put the water. Now I'm going to do something with blue I'm gonna make this one pretty dark i love blue then blue and orange together opposite on the color wheel so complementary color i know that now you are an ex expert in colors and maybe we can leave some space white and see what happens what happens next? Let me see if I can use this blue instead to do some nice, actually, this sort of a indigo. Some nice, maybe, shading on this mushroom. A little umbrella. It really looks like a gown or somehow, like a little dress. So I'm just doing long strokes. And then maybe we can oh, introduce hot pink. Ooh la la. On the very bottom. Now we do not want to neglect the background. I'm using a light blue and maybe we can do some nice gentle coloring. So in this case, I'm putting my pencil very pretty much in diagonal, so not like this, but pretty much in diagonal, and I gently scrub it around the design. Almost no pressure. Just to have a little bit of color, and then we are gonna spread the water. We are gonna see what happened, and we see if we need to add them more. To create some nice cohesiveness so this is why we don't want to neglect the background nice gentle strokes include a little bit of yellow actually just because I'm really 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 curious to see what we're gonna have here even if we know you know the yellow and blue will give us green since you know it's a, a ground 
we should not even able to see the sky. This is really not the sky, it's just the background. There may be a greenish coloring. It's going to be a nice hue, which means colors, to bring all the design together. But maybe I'm gonna also add a little bit of pink because as we say, we are experimenting, right? So let's not be concerned about what happened in the final product. It might be very pretty. It might be not as pretty as we want it to be. It is totally fine. We are going to collect the data, which means that we collect what we did and in future practice, we can change it or keep it the same or modify some and part of the practices, add or eliminate some things because we know, right? But there is no other way if not learning from experiences. So now I'm gonna start to brush the water and see what happens. So far, I am very happy and pleased about this beautiful, nice uh, mushroom inspired uh, uh, painting. Let's see, very gently, I tip my brush in the water. If you have too much, don't make it too wet at the beginning because we are always able to add water. But if we have too much, it will bleed and we will lose the control. So very gently, we're gonna go over. And as you can see, yes, the color blends. They don't blend as much as real traditional, sorry, because these are real as well, traditional watercolors, but they do blend. So you have actually a little more texture with this media that you will have with the um, um, watercolor. I brush extremely gently and I don't add the too much pressure. I don't want the color to bleed too much. I wanna really keep this design and I wanna really keep uh, some of the texture. Now, the result will depend definitely from the uh, watercolors that you're using, the watercolor pencil that you're using. Each brand is different. Faber-Castell is extremely professional, good blend uh, brand, but I'm not using it. And so if you're using a, something more scholastic, it's gonna work as you are seeing it's working. And definitely I am noticing more texture and a little less blending compared to traditional watercolor which is something that will give us a little more control on the media, right? Because you control the pencil much better and than a brush. And for some of us, it could really bring better result. Let's blend those leaves, you see? Nice, very nice. Take your time, if you need to go slow, you go slow. If you wanna do brush strokes because you wanna see even more texture, go for brush strokes like I'm doing it right now. Tiny little brush strokes. If you want to see more blending, add the more water. If the colors bleed a little bit outside, it's totally fine. It's actually very pretty because once again, we are using watercolors, right? So we want some nice, you know, blending from the water. Let's go on top of this mushroom, like in this the top of the mushroom here and here. Doing tiny little circles. I'm trying different type of strokes because I wanna see what gives me what, right? So I invite you to do the same tiny, tiny, tiny. Change the direction of your strokes. Let's see what happened on this one. I'm gonna go from the pink. I wish the hot pink would stay and will show a little more, but probably. I will have to go with some more over here. Oh, 
Oh, I like that the purple bled, bleeded a little bit on top of the green. And now let's gently scrub the background with a little bit more water than I use for the design. I'm always gentle, gentle when I scrub. With a cloud of color, very nice. It makes the design very whimsical, very delicate. I personally like to see some of the strokes underneath, so I'm not gonna overdo the water. But definitely, the result is, is the result is similar to the just the watercolors that we did at the big sorry the pencil, just the dry pencil. But you see some nice blending uh, with the water. Now we can use the gray if we want. We can go and dark up some area. Let me see if I can go on top of what is wet. So I'm gonna dip the pencil in the water directly and then I will add a little extra color when I feel that I want to have more pop of color. So I'm dipping the pencil now, the tip of the pencil into the water and then I go and I color directly on the area that I want some more shading. I'm gonna do the same with the gray. Yes, I want it a little darker here and here. And then here. So the tech, you, so when you dip the, water, the watercolor pencil directly into the water, I feel that you have a, a deeper, like a, a, a more intense coloring and effect but I would do only small details with this because you cannot really do bigger details with this technique. It just gives you a few seconds to use the color and then you need to dip it again. So imagine if you have to do something big, it's probably not the right technique, right? So you wanna make sure that you use it for small details, few retouches. I think that I'm gonna add some of this beautiful water color like uh, aqua here on this blue to make this mushroom a little more colorful. I'm gonna add, you see, it makes the dots darker, more intense, very nice. I love it. So we try two different way, right? We did a traditional like a color with pencil, just like we would do with any other type of regular coloring pencil. Then we brush gently the water on the design with the brush. And now we are doing some more like a touches, mostly to add the value, like a darker and more intense spot and area by dipping the pencil inside the water. Of course, if you're using a regular pencil, don't do this because even if you dip it in the water, nothing's gonna happen. But if you're using a ready watercolor pencil, you can try this. So we try two different technique, techniques that will give us two slightly different results. And you can compare and contrast and see which one do you think is the most effective, which one you will end up to use more. If you have been using regular pencil, you're not just doing these steps, you're just watching us and maybe thinking if you want to invest some money in doing this, you know, in, in buying also watercolor pencils. So in the future where I will post some more practices with watercolor pencil you will be equipped and you can follow my lead and do some practices with me hopefully you will decide to do so and as i said at the beginning you don't have to spend so much for the best product out there you want to just get familiarized with the 
media and the, and the technique. And once you will be more comfortable, if you think that it's really your things, then go for it. I really like, for example, this technique to do the, the grass. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Now, I'm gonna leave it like that. If you would like to let it dry and do the dark, uh, extra fine lines as we usually do with watercolors, so you can also do that. I probably think that I will leave it as it is. I don't know if I want to do maybe some of the lines underneath the mushroom, just to have the nice uh, pattern, right? Yes, and make the bottom of the mushrooms a little the darker. outlines you can really play in and have fun They're just to curve the line, so they start from the corner of the stem all the way to the edge of the uh, head of the mushroom. You can add some more value, right, by scrubbing gently the black, the black uh, creating some nice uh, shadows, right? Yeah, I really like it. So far, I think that this first practice and experiment together was very successful. As you can see, the result is something still pretty defined with a nice texture, a little different blending than it would happen with a watercolor pencil, well, the, sorry, with a traditional watercolor. So I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, we did it. This is a nice, mushroom inspired design that we just uh, finished with watercolor pencil and a couple of different techniques. In the first technique we just color it with the, the pencil like the regular pencil and then we brush the water on top with the brush and then the second technique to add the more texture, more, de more details and work on some value, we dipped the tip of the pencil inside the water. There are different techniques. I suggest you to use both. I feel that the second one is very good for adding value, adding extra texture and adding final details. It's not very good or comfortable for bigger area or bigger design. So I hope that you enjoy it and please consider to subscribe to my channel and like uh, link the bell for notifications so you will be notified weekly when I release a new videos. I wish you a wonderful day and I see you all very soon. Ciao a tutti!